Hello, I'm Ken Jones, Associate Professor of Classics and History. I've been teaching at Baylor for 13 years and have been chair of the Classics Department for the last two. So what is Classics? Well, we use the term Classics a lot in our daily life. Of course, we in the Classics Department use it all the time. But uh, even people outside of the Classics Department might talk about classic cars, classic classical music, classic movies, Turner classic movies. So classic there usually has something to do with it being old, yes, I mean there is a, a age to classics. So there is that sense to it, but it's not just that it's old, there are plenty of old things that aren't necessarily worth looking at or talking about. So there's something more to classic than just a, a, an old thing that's been handed down. There's the idea that it's, it's a model. It's a model for things to come in the future. The idea is that something has attained such a level of perfection or has, has been produced that is such high quality that people have to take it into account as they make new things or, or write new things or, or create new things. That you can't ignore this classic model. It's something that you have to deal with. So what is classics as a discipline? It's not just looking at old models of things. Classics as a discipline looks back to the Greek and Roman world, the ancient Greek and Roman world. It looks at every aspect of culture. So why the Greeks and the Romans? That might seem arbitrary just to say, well, we're going to study you know, the literature and the science and the, the mathematics of Greeks and Romans. Okay? Why, why them? And it's not arbitrary. The Greeks and Romans stand at the foundation. They, they laid the foundation of the world that we live in today. The classics department in the field of classics is the original interdisciplinary uh, study. I mean, we look at those types of things, but we look at them in a kind of a connected, holistic way within the Greco-Roman world. So we do literature, we do philosophy, we do history, we do art, we do rhetoric. We even do ancient science. We study the languages, though. That's at the heart of what we do. We study Greek and we study Latin. And then we can do all kinds of things with those. We can use them as tools as we look at uh, other things. I'm a historian, for instance, and so I use Greek and Latin as I study ancient history. I'm currently writing a biography, for instance, of Mark Antony. Now, some of you probably have already begun Latin. Some of you maybe even have begun Greek. But you can come to Baylor without having done either of those. Sign up for Latin one, sign up for Greek one, and within a year you'll be reading real literature in those ancient languages. The best material of that day, and the centuries have judged it some of the best material that's been written ever. You're reading Plato, you're reading Homer, you're reading Virgil, you're reading the New Testament, all in the original language, you know, within a, a year of starting. So different people in the department uh, take different approaches to classics. We have many who study the literature. We have a uh, few people who study Latin poetry, for instance. Uh, we have one faculty member who works on uh, papyrus documents, so things that have been dug out of the sands of Egypt that have been laying there uh, for thousands of years just waiting to be discovered. We have a number of people who work on the history of the ancient world. As I said, I'm one of those. Uh, we have another colleague who works on uh, women especially, the role of women in antiquity, and especially women in Roman religion. You might be wondering what kinds of classes you'd find in the Classics Department. Of course, you'd find Greek and Latin at all levels. Uh, from beginning, where you walk in and you've never studied Latin or Greek, and you're going to learn from the beginning, the alphabet, all the way through advanced classes, where you're, you're digging deep into a certain author, into a certain work reading the scholarship, studying with an expert on that uh, particular author, that particular literature. We also have a number of upper-level courses uh, on aspects of the ancient world, ancient civilization, taught in translation, so no Latin or Greek required. We have an ancient warfare class, women in the Greco-Roman world, race and ethnicity in antiquity. We also offer a number of general education classes. Classical mythology, for instance, is on the literature and context list of the new uh, Arts and Sciences core. We have a freshman writing class that will look at some topic in the ancient world while it's also teaching you what you need to know about writing at the college level. 
A second practical question students have is, what can I do with a degree in Classics? And there's really no limit to what you can do with a degree in Classics. Classics is a good, solid, liberal arts education. Many of our graduates have gone on to teach Latin and Greek at the pre-collegiate level. They've taught in classical schools, uh, public schools, private schools. Of course, you could go on to graduate school. Many of our students have gone on to master's degrees, many to PhDs at some of the finest programs in the country and the world. We've had students accepted at Harvard and Princeton and Berkeley. Currently, we have a student uh, working on her doctoral uh, degree at the University of Oxford. So there's, we have a student on a Fulbright as well, who's at the York University in England. Many of our students have wanted to pursue careers in medicine, and a classics degree can get you there. We have a student right now who's going to be graduating this semester. She's double majoring. She has a classics major, and she's majoring in biochemistry. And she's headed to medical school, as, as many of our graduates have done. Many of our students have gone on to law school. Uh, we've had students go on into philosophy programs, not just to study ancient philosophy, but to use their knowledge of the ancients, Plato and Aristotle and the Greek philosophers and Roman philosophers, to use that as a background to then undertake studies in modern philosophy, modern theology. Uh, we've had students go into ministry. That's another obvious uh, uh, pathway with a classics degree. Going to seminary, one's going to need to study Greek, to read the New Testament and the Church Fathers, maybe Latin too. We've had students who have taken their classics degree and gone on into the business world. We had a student who graduated a number of years ago and took that degree and is now has a senior level position in, in a large consulting firm, one of the, the world's greatest. I've answered the question, what you can do with classics. But another more interesting question is, what can classics do with you? What will classics do for you? And I think the most exciting thing about classics is that it puts you in that great tradition. It, it gives you a skill, but it gives you a cultural depth and a cultural knowledge, a, a theological depth, a, a philosophical knowledge. There's a real tangible way in which we connect to our teachers, and of course they connect to theirs, but we can continue that connection all the way down through the centuries, founding of the American Republic, back through the Middle Ages, all the way to the ancient world. There's been an unbroken chain of people handing on these cultural items to us, these pieces of literature, these pieces of art, these ideas. And you are in that tradition as a student of classics, and, and I think you feel it too. It changes the kind of person you are because you're engaging with these classic works, these model works. So it's not just a connection with antiquity. It's not just that you're standing here in the 21st century and you are reading Cicero. It's that you connect to everybody all along the line who's been doing that. Is at every stop on the way throughout our history, throughout Western history, these are the texts, these are the ideas, these are the canons that have mattered to people. And so when they're thinking through, when, when they're writing a piece of literature, say in the 16th century, they have this stuff in mind too. So it not only brings you closer to the ancient world, it brings you closer to, to every period in history. It brings you closer to the people who have been studying and handing down and cherishing and loving this material and, and building on it. And you are in that tradition as well. If you'd like more information about the Baylor Classics Department, you can visit our website. There are a number of things there that touch on some of the topics I've discussed to today. There are faculty pages, faculty bios, information about former students and what they've done. And though we couldn't talk to you in person, and you couldn't be here with us, we are here, and we would like to hear from you. Thank you for taking a moment to be with me today. I look forward to meeting you in person, and we'll look forward to having you in class.